segment, we're going to go ahead and take a look at uh, statistical power. That is the ability to show that the research manipulation had an effect. What's the probability that if your treatment actually has an effect, that your research design will demonstrate that? That's the concept of power. Let's consider our previous example where we had a treatment that was effective. It increased people's IQ by 13. However, uh, due to sampling error, our group started off with an average IQ of 97. So I start off at 97, plus 13 gets them to an IQ of 110. But alas, you have six people. Six people could end up with an average IQ of 110 just due to chance, just due to sampling error, 12% of the time. So even though our treatment was effective, and considerably effective, increasing IQ by 13 points, we were not able to demonstrate it. Why? Our alpha level is 0.05. And if we'd just been a bit more relaxed, let's say had our alpha at 0.15, then we might have been able to reject our null hypothesis. So let's say we do that. Let's say we set our alpha to 0.15. That way we won't make that terrible type 2 error of uh, failing to reject the null hypothesis because of insufficient evidence. When the null hypothesis is correct, uh, well, that's one thing. But if the null hypothesis is false, with an alpha of 0.15, as mentioned, we make fewer type 2 errors. Okay, but I know we have to also consider the possibility. What about all those times when the null hypothesis is, uh, is true? If we have our alpha of 0.15, that means for 15% of our research uh, studies where the null hypothesis is um, true, just due to sampling error, we're going to end up with a sample mean that's so extreme, we'll go ahead and reject the null incorrectly, that being a type 1 error. Well, if you publish something as having an effect, other researchers read it, and they get excited. And then they start to invest months or even years saying, oh, wow, you know, vitamin water has an impact on IQ. I wonder, let's give vitamin water to um, elderly people and see if it impacts their IQ. Uh, let's give vitamin water to preschool kids. Let's see if it impacts their IQ. All these researchers are now excited about vitamin water, and they're all out there testing it. But if your publication was a type 1 error, that is, due to sampling error, uh, you incorrectly rejected your null hypothesis, you have all these other people who are investing their time building upon something that was a mistake, was an error. So if your alpha is 0.15, that means that 15% of the time when the null hypothesis uh, is true and the treatment has no impact, there's no difference, no relationship, you have these people who are incorrectly rejecting it, who are then publishing it, who are then causing other people to spend lots of their time uh, trying to build upon it, it would be a sad state of affairs. So as a result, uh, our industry standard is an alpha of 0.05. Okay, so let's take a look at that again. If your alpha is 0.05 and you increase it to 0.15, you're going to make fewer type 2 errors. It'll be easier to reject the null hypothesis. So if you have an actual treatment, it's going to be easier to show that your treatment was helpful. The flip side is that if the null hypothesis is correct and your treatment has no impact, just due to sampling error, it'll be easier to um, reject the null hypothesis. You'll get the sample mean that extreme uh, just due to chance 15% of the time. So when you increase alpha, you're increasing your type 1 errors. Uh, if your alpha is 0.20, then you know when the null hypothesis is uh, correct, you're going to incorrectly reject the null hypothesis 20% of the time. If your alpha was 0.5, you'd be incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis 50% of the time. The bigger your null hypothesis, the more often you make type 1 error, but, and also, uh, the easier it will be to show uh, that your treatment has an impact if it truly does.
the smaller your alpha, let's say we make alpha 0.01. Oh, we're going to rarely ever reject the hypothesis when we shouldn't. That also means that your treatment had better be incredibly powerful. It's got to have a huge impact. Get your sample mean way out there so that you'll reject an hypothesis. Okay. So, again, power refers to the probability of correctly rejecting an hypothesis and supporting the research hypothesis. How can we increase power? We talked about changing alpha. If you increase your alpha, it takes less evidence to show that your treatment had an impact. Another way to increase uh, power that you've probably been thinking about is increase your sample size. With a sample size of 6, you can have quite a lot of variability in sample means. But let's say that uh, we get a larger sample. Well, then the distribution of sample means becomes more narrow. If we increase our sample size even further, our sampling distribution becomes even more narrow. Think about it this way. If you have a sample size of a thousand people, some people are above average, some people are below average, as a whole group of 1,000 people, there cannot be much variability from 100. If you have a single person, that person might have an IQ of 145, or IQ of 89, or an IQ of 112. One person, you can have lots of variability. 10 people, harder to have variability. 100 people, even harder. 1,000 people, hardly any variability at all. So the larger your sample, the less sampling error there is. The less sampling error there is, the more obvious any effect of your treatment. So ways to boost power. You could increase your sample size. You could select uh, an independent variable, uh, levels that have an impact. If I want to show that aspirin uh, helps people with uh, headaches, I should not compare zero, 0 milligrams versus 10 milligrams. I should compare 0 milligrams with a much larger amount that's medically safe, but likely to have an effect. For my dependent variable, I should use a reliable measure. That is, uh, just got rid of a bathroom scale. Because I get on it, it would say one amount. I get off, I get on it, say a different amount. If, you're, uh, if you don't have much reliability, um, then that's a lot of noise and it's going to be harder to see if there's a true effect. Alpha level, you could increase your alpha level above 0.05. It would be easier to report a, a difference if one existed, but we saw that also increase your type 1 errors. Finally, you can select an appropriate statistical test. Some statistical tests uh, have more requirements, but they can be more sensitive. Pearson's R, lots of requirements, but also fairly sensitive to a correlation. Spearman's row, fewer requirements, but not as sensitive. You want to select as sensitive a test as you can.